Welcome back to The Painting Coach, where I show you how to take what you get in the box and make it look something like what's on the box. In this week's tutorial, we're going to be painting the brand new Beast Snaggers for the Orcs. So make sure you sit back, relax and enjoy, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. All right, let's get started with this Beast Snagger. Now, those uh, observing amongst you realize this isn't one of the new models. This is a knob I've had to make up to look a little like a Beast Snagger. And the reason for that is that the postie didn't get my box to me on time. So uh, we're making do. So what I've done is I've primed the model uh, black and then I've just thrown some white on it from above to give me the zenithal and just make it a little easier to, to paint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the boots with some of bad and black um, and because this isn't one of the beast snaggers who's got the the shirtless look I'm gonna go for uh, a black vest on him as well so just take your time make sure that it's not uh, too messy at this stage because it'll just make it easier to use some contrast paints and really change up the way parts of it look later on so work your way around get that all done and then uh, we'll come back and we will start to highlight the black so once we've got that black finished we want to give it a little highlight i'm going to give it uh just a little mechanicus standard gray and we're going to just make it kind of like a, a a jagged highlight fairly rough and if you want to add some scratches in to bits that are leather you can do that just take your time and then otherwise just work your way around and <clears throat> i like those raised edges don't worry if it's a little thick in places. You can always go back and refine that later on if you want to. But it's nice and simple, nice and straightforward just to get some variation of colour in. So do that on all the, the black areas of the model and uh, all the black material I should say and then we'll come back in and we'll do the pants next. So I want to base the pants in like a, a light brown colour. So the colour I'm going to use for this is Bane Blade Brown. And I'm also going to base that weapon holster as well. So now my Bane Blade Brown is fairly thin, so I'm probably going to need a couple of coats to get that coverage that I want. So nice and simple stages again. Remember, just trying to be as tidy as we can uh, because we want to make sure that we can use contrast paint later on just to add some variation to uh, the model so work your way around get it all done should be fairly easy and then we'll come back in and we'll shade it next once that's uh, dry we want to give it a little bit of a shade so the color i'm going to use is agrax earth shade now i'm not going to flood the model with it so if you watch my videos you know i never flood the model with shades but you can see there straight away it's picking up where the the kind of the folds and the creases are so we just want to work our way around. We'll give it a little bit under there. But again, not flooding it. So just start with a little bit on your brush and work it around. So get that done over all the Bane Blade Brown you've just painted. And then we'll come back and highlight it all next. Once that Agrax shade is dry, we just want to go back to Bane Blade Brown and touch up some of the, the kind of the rough areas. Uh, and also just catch some of the creases in the pants as well. Same for the weapon here. Nice and simple. So work your way round and then we'll come back and we'll pop another highlight on. You might need a couple of coats to get over if you've got really dark shading on there, but that's no problem. So get that done and we'll come back and highlight. And we'll highlight all of this. Uh, with a kind of a lighter colour. I'm going to use Carrick Stone, which gives it's a nice subtle highlight. So where you've got kind of big areas like that, you can just paint along. And then where you've got the ridges, you can just highlight those kind of individually. So it's a nice, simple process, just catching those raised edges. And then where you've got kind of big raised areas, we can just paint this along. It's subtle enough to, to blend in quite nicely. 
So highlight away, uh, and again, as ever, you can do as much or as little as you want. If you want to use a lighter colour to make this stand out a little more, you can maybe use something like uh, a shab de bone. But I'm happy with the effect that I'm getting with the Carrick stone. So that's that done. And I think we'll start the metallics next. So when it comes to the metallics, there is quite a lot on the model. So she's using some iron hand steel. Um, choosing where to start really i mean so we've got the big chopper on this model you know if you've got guns or gun casing then paint them with uh with the metallic with the iron hand steel it'll cover over the the white base could absolutely find we've got the blades here for the power claw now we've just got kind of miscellaneous bits all over the place so we've got you know on this model in particular we've got the uh, the handle on the pistol, sorry, the not the handle, the mechanism on the pistol, the back banner, the chain, etc. So just get all those done and we'll come back, we'll shade them next. Uh, and whilst we're kind of doing that, I'll decide if we're going to do any sort of colour variations as well, just to change things up a bit. Shading all of that silver, really, really easy, just a little bit of null oil. Just let it work its way into those recesses. Again, as with any shading, don't flood the model. Or using a wash, I should say, not just shading. Don't flood the model. Keep control. Because it just makes the cleanup a bit easier later on. So get all that done over all the silver that you've painted. And we'll come back and we'll highlight it all next. To highlight the silver, we want to use some chrome from Vallejo Model Air. Now you can use Stormhose Silver uh, from Citadel if that's what you've got. So what we want to try and do is we want to catch those kind of edges on the, the power claw. Now when it comes to the blade here, obviously we want to catch the edges anyway. But we just want to streak along here like that just to give that impression that the, the metal is sharp and scuffed. So we'll obviously do this both sides of the blade. Nice thin lines like that. And then you can also work your way around and kind of catch the sharp edges that are modelled on. So do that with the chrome for all the bits you've got silver. And then we'll uh, have a look at all the straps next. So there's quite a bit of strapping around the model. So we want to differentiate that from the lighter colours. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take some snake bite leather contrast paint. And I'm going to use this on all the kind of strapping that we've got. So as you know, as normal, not flooding any areas with this. But as it dries, it'll just give a nice self-highlighted, self-shaded kind of effect, which is what we're after. So just go around all the strapping on the model, paint it with the snake bite leather. Got a bit on the wrist there, a little bit on the leg. And we'll let that dry and then we'll come back. We probably won't need to highlight it. Uh, we'll just double check it. And then we'll uh, we'll move on to the, uh, the armour plates, I think. So there's a fair few different bits of armour colour on these chaps. And there's some yellow accent armour. White is the main colour. There's also a red accent. So I'm going to do the yellow accent first. And basically I'm going to use some Avalanche Sunset for this. And I'm just going to use this to base up bits of armor that are going to be yellow now one of the key things when it comes to painting yellow you will need more than one coat but always make sure that coat is dry before you put the second one on otherwise you will run the risk of tearing the paint uh, as it dries and that's when you'll get lumpy really not very good finishes so if you're not sure which bits to do with yellow just check the box art there's plenty of pictures out there let it dry and we'll come back and give it a shade next when that uh, yellow's dry, I just want to take some Reichland Flesh Shade and use this to just shade around some of those bolts that are in there. <coughs> Excuse me. Just like that. Let that dry and then we can go back in and just tidy it up with some Avalanche Sunset. I won't do that on cam and I'll show you how to highlight it next. 
I want to highlight this yellow to be fairly bright so the colour I'm going to use for that is um, flash kits yellow and you can see the difference between the two yellows on the palette in terms of what they look like on the model you can see there that get a nice kind of real different bright delight on there so just work around that yellow accent color and again if you've got anything such as the the iconography make sure you you get that done as well with this yellow and we'll come back and uh, i think we'll do the white plates next the first thing to do uh when we're doing these white plates is we want to get them all a nice kind of coherent white color so the spray will have helped uh, with everything uh, but what we want to do is just want to bring them up to that same colour. So I'm using some uh, some Corax white. I'm basically just going to paint all the plates with the Corax white. Now, it may well be that some of these plates end up being uh, red later on. I'm just going to paint them with the Corax white for now. So take your time, enjoy this step because you know, that's why we paint, isn't it? We paint for enjoyment. So, well, at least I do. You might just paint for gaming, Bry really enjoy it so I'm going to take my time and enjoy the challenge of getting a nice even white coat again the benefit of orcs are that if it's not quite perfect that's okay so try probably should use a bigger brush but I was just looking for it and it's disappeared off my off my desk in the sort of brief moment in time that I wasn't looking so I'm just going to get that done, get all the plates out, nice coherent white, and then we'll come back and we'll shade it. I'm going to go for a dirty white on these guys. To get the dirty armour effect, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade the whole thing with some Agrax Earth Shade. Make sure to work it into any uh, nooks and crannies you've got. I'm going to do that bottom part red. Then clean your brush off. And just paint it over the kind of rough uh, open areas or open panel areas so for sure you again on the, the bit underneath here this kind of bit of armor here probably put a bit too much shade on but it's okay clean my brush off and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it away from some of those big broad open areas leaving it kind of in the recesses and towards the bottom if you need to put it back in around some of these areas and you can do just adding it in like that so get that done all the way across and again it doesn't matter how tidy this is because it's dirty armor we're going to put some highlights and damage on as well so get it done and we'll come back and i'll show you that once we're really happy that our Grax Earth Shade is dry, let's get in and give it a little bit of a highlight. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use some White Scar. And this is for highlighting as well as the first bit of battle damage. So in terms of the highlights, we want to catch the, the edges of the plates. But also don't worry if, you know, it's not perfect. And you see what I'm doing now is, whilst I'm catching the edges, I'm also just kind of stippling a little bit. And that gives you the effect of chipped paint. It's, it's a real nice way of getting some simple uh, damage, but also a highlight as well. And I catch kind of all the, the rivets and the studs as well. And then when it comes to the, the pads again, we're just going to stipple along the edge. And let's just say we want to put a little kind of scrape in just lightly add it across like that so work your way around all the white chipping away adding damage and we'll come back and just add a little bit of uh, a deeper gouge effect to finish it off so we'll add a little bit of chipping and the color we're going to use that is Skaven Blight Din so I've thinned it down a bit you don't want too much on your brush but you do want a good point point. and what we're going to do we're just going to apply this randomly along the kind of the edges as well as where we've got those white dashes we just want to use it to sort of paint inside and then that gives the impression that there's some deeper gouges in the pad so just get that done start off subtly don't use too much and if you feel like you need to build some more up then you can do uh, but less is more to start with and then just add 
more as you feel a little more comfortable a little bit more confident that should work out fine so the last uh, bit of armor is the red bit so i'm going to use uh, corn red to base this uh, now you could potentially use Doomball brown because it's very red brown um, I'm going with corn red though and the other thing I'm going to do with this I'm going to base the squig uh, but I'm going to be real careful just to make sure that uh, I get the flesh only I'm going to leave the hair the mouth and the claws etc I don't want to get them too uh, too covered in the red paint so any bits of red armor you want to do get it done with the corn red then we'll come back and uh, we'll start to highlight it a bit I want to highlight with a bright red so I'm using evil sun scarlet what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna use it to catch the edges of all the kind of red plating just to make it stand out a bit the other thing I'm going to do is paint the squig and I'm going to paint all the kind of large surface areas of the squig I'm just going to leave that uh, corn red in the recesses so get that done and then we'll come back and uh, we'll just give the squig a little bit of an extra highlight as well to highlight the squig just want to take a little bit of squig orange I'm just going to pop this in those most prominent areas just like that. For the eyes, I've just popped some uh, flash kits yellow in there. So nice and simple. If you want, you can chuck some of this on the armor plates as well, but I'm happy with that. So we'll come back now, we'll focus on the mouth, and then we'll do uh, the green flesh last. For the mouth of both the squig and the orc, can take some volupus pink and just paint this around the inside now be careful around teeth um, because it just makes it easier when it comes to actually doing them but just work that in there kind of towards the the back and then if you need to fix the teeth later on just just use some corax white to fix the teeth so get that done let it dry uh, and that should be it for the inside of the mouth so we'll focus on the teeth and any bone areas next. For the teeth and any bone, we're going to just use some Skeleton Horde contrast paint. Now, I'm going to be fairly messy with it. Just work it over all the kind of the teeth and any bone areas that you might have, such as these horns sticking out here. Let that dry. And then we'll highlight it next. I'm going to pick out the teeth with some of this white scar I've got left on the palette. So I've not got much on there at all. And I'm just really looking to catch the most prominent bits that we've got sticking out. Just like that. So it's nice and easy, nice and simple. Get it done. And we'll do the green skin next. Basing the flesh is really nice and straightforward. Take some of the new <coughs> auric flesh and this should paint over quite nicely. Let it dry. If you've made any mistakes, you may need to add uh, a second uh, coat on there. But it should be fairly, fairly decent. So I'm not going to spend too much time filming this for you. But get that all over, nice even coverage, nice even coat, and then we'll uh, look at shading it next. Next up, we're going to cover all of that green with some Beal Tan Green. Now, what's really important here is that we don't let it settle and flood uh, in one particular area. So, just keep it moving. We don't want the shadows to be too deep. We want this to be quite a vibrant green. So, work around, make sure you're happy take your time keep spreading it out and we'll come back once that's dry and we'll uh, get into the highlighting 
when that uh, pale tan green is dried we're going to go back to the auric flesh and just kind of look for some of the volumes in the muscle and just highlight very broadly so that we leave the uh, pale tan green in the recesses see when it comes to kind of hands and fingers just highlight those really obvious areas so you may need a couple of uh, goes at getting some really solid coverage in some of these areas that's okay get it done and then we'll come back with the final highlight on the skin and then it's just the a hair of the squig and some nails to do the last highlight for the flesh is going to be with Krieg Khaki and in terms of what we're looking for with this we're looking to catch kind of all the kind of raised areas so you can see from the features of the face there's quite a prominent things like the brows uh, going up into the ears down by the, the side of the jaw underneath the mouth so just work your way around highlighting all these kind of little bits and then when you're done we're pretty much finished We've just got a little bit to do we've got the claws the nails and the hair of the squig to do so we'll do that next and then uh, we'll base them up and have a look on the turntable nice and simple to finish off the claws and the hair on the squig just taking some pterodon turquoise and you can see just painting it on use this on any of the nails on the orcs as well if you want it a little darker i think i want it a little darker than that i'll let it dry and put a second coat on but other than that this beast snagger is done let's have a look at him on the turntable so there we have it this beast snagger is done and ready for the tabletop I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me make sure I'm producing the kind of content that you want to see. If you'd like to support me, you can do so using the links in the description. There's a link for my Patreon where you get exclusive access to me via my Discord, as well as a live monthly frequently asked question show on YouTube, some exclusive content, as well as the occasional giveaway. There's my link for Goblin Gaming where you get up to 20% of all your Warhammer and all your other Wargaming needs as well. And there's also my Amazon recommended equipment list. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you next time.